Okay, so in this video, we're looking at division with complex numbers. And a typical example or question might look like this. Express 5 over 2 minus 4i in the form a plus bi. They can ask this kind of question in different ways. One of the key things to watch out for and a good little exam technique is whenever you see a division line, you're going to want to apply this division process, okay? So the method basically with division is this. You will multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. Okay, so let me explain that in more detail. The denominator, of course, is always what's on the bottom. All right, so we want the conjugate of 2 minus 4i, which is on the bottom. Now, let's talk about the conjugate for a second. So the conjugate, basically, is the complex number, but with the sign of the imaginary part changed, okay? So the conjugate of 2 minus 4i would be 2 plus 4i. You just change the sign of the imaginary part only. So that is the conjugate. In this question, right? Let's take another example here. Uh, so let's say you have z is equal to minus 1 plus 3i. The conjugate, by the way, can be denoted by this z and this bar on top, okay? So watch out for that uh, notation, that's important. Well, if I'm looking for the conjugate of this complex number, again, remember, I'm just going to change the sign of the imaginary part only. So it'll stay minus 1, but the plus 3i will change to minus 3i. Okay, now the key thing about the conjugate is this. When you multiply a complex number by its conjugate, you'll end up with a real number only. In other words, there will no longer be an imaginary part. All right, now we'll see that when we go through the process, uh, but that's why we use the conjugate, because when you change the sign of the imaginary part to get the conjugate and you multiply it by the complex number, then you end up with a real part only. Let's just take another little example here. Let's say you have the complex number W, and that is 5 minus 7i. Then what would be the conjugate of this? Pause the video and write down your answer. Well, remember, you change the sign of the imaginary part only, so that will be 5 plus 7i. Okay, so back to our example here then. So we have expressed this in the form a plus bi. Uh, and again, the minute you see the division line, we're just going to apply our division process. So our method, remember, is to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. So the denominator we've seen already is 2 minus 4i. And the conjugate of that, of course, we've already identified, is going to be changing the, the sign of the imaginary part. So 2 plus 4i. So we have 5 over 2 minus 4i, and of course the reason we multiply top and bottom by it is so that we don't actually change uh, the fraction. Remember, to get an equivalent fraction, as long as you do the same thing to the top and the bottom, the fraction will stay equivalent. So we are going to get an equivalent fraction, but we're just going to get something in this form rather than in this fractional form. So multiplying top and bottom by the conjugate. So multiplying the top and the bottom by 2 plus 4i. So what does that give me? So on the top I have 5 times 2 plus 4i and on the bottom I have 2 minus 4i times 2 plus 4i. So just take your time here and multiply these out, all right? So just like with your algebra, multiplying out your brackets, 5 times 2 will give you 10. 5 times 4i will give you 20i. And on the bottom, 2 times 2, of course, is 4. 2 times 4i is 8i. Minus 4i times 2 is minus 8i. And a minus 4i by a plus 4i, take your time here, a minus by a plus is minus, 4 times 4 is 16, and i times i is i squared. There we go. Now remember from your multiplication with complex numbers, whenever you come across an i squared, what you are going to do, of course, is always substitute in minus 1. So that's the next thing I'm going to do here. So... 
the top will stay the same. There's nothing more I can do to tidy up the top. Uh, but on the bottom, of course, I will be able to substitute in my minus one for the I squared. And so now that will give me minus 16 by minus one is plus 16. Okay, so now we, we can do a bit of tidying up on the bottom and we can add together, of course, the things that are the same. So we can add together the real with the real, which is the four and the 16, and the imaginary with the imaginary. Now, when I add together the imaginary parts, plus eight I minus a eight I, it is, of course, going to give me zero or cancel each other out. And of course, this is why when you multiply a complex number by its conjugate, we're ending up with just real parts left, okay? Because what you will have is the imaginary parts cancelling out. So on the bottom, I'm left with four plus 16, which is 20. Now be careful what you want to do here at the end then. Remember, you need it in a form A plus B I. So we'll divide both these terms, 10 plus 20 I by the 20. So it'll be 10 divided by the 20 plus 20i divided by the 20. And 10 divided by 20 is the same as a half. And 20 divided by 20 is the same as, of course, uh, one. So you can write it as one i, or of course, just half plus i. And that's your answer. Okay, let's try this question. So again, this is asked in a slightly different way. We have let z1 equals four plus two i, let z2 equals uh, 3 minus 2i and we want to find z1 divided by z2. All right, so again, you've got your division, so we will apply our division method. Pause the video here. Let's see how you get on. So z1 is 4 plus 2i and we're going to divide by z2, 3 minus 2i. And of course, we're going to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. So the conjugate of the denominator is going to be changing the sign of the imaginary part only. 3 plus 2i and do the same to the bottom. Okay, to keep, of course, the fraction equivalent, we will multiply top and bottom by the same thing. So now let's multiply this out. So I've got the double brackets on the top and double brackets on the bottom as well. So 4 times 3 is 12, 4 times 2i is 8i. 2i times 3 is 6i, and 2i times 2i is 4i squared. On the bottom, I have 3 times 3, which is 9. 3 times 2i, which is 6i. Minus 2i times 3, which is minus 6i. And minus 2i times plus 2i, well, a minus by a plus is minus. 2 times 2, of course, is 4. i times i is i squared. So again, I can see I have i squared here on the top and the bottom. So immediately I'm going to sub in a minus one for both of those. And then of course I can tidy up what I have, adding my real with my real. Plus four times minus one of course is minus four. And my imaginary with my imaginary. And minus 4 times minus 1 is a plus 4. Okay, so now the real parts on the top are, of course, 12 take away 4, which is 8. And the imaginary parts is plus 8i plus 6i, which, of course, is a positive 14i. Remember, you're just adding at this point. Some people make the mistake they continue to do multiplication here. Be careful, you have no more brackets. There's no multiplication signs. We're just adding and subtracting. And the, uh, the real parts, should I say, on the bottom is nine add four again, 13. And the imaginary is plus six i minus six i, which of course is zero and cancels out. So remember we want it in the form uh, Actually, they don't say a plus b i this time. They say x plus y i. So same thing. We want it in that form. So in other words, uh, divide both sides by the 13 and break them apart. 
and that is our answer. <laughs>